Hello, I'm Didet. A lot of people have asked me how I, well, changed the name and the icon of the bubble. As you can see, this is a VHBL bubble. It is called VHBL and has the VHBL icon. And this is a PSP, or in this case PSV for Vita, Filer 6.6 .6 bubble. It has the same icon as PSP Filer. And yeah, the name is PSV Filer 6.6. .6. So, how to change the icon and how to change the name? In the last short video, <clears throat> 40 minutes short, I've showed you how to change, for example, Uno into a VB VHBL. So pretty much you change one of your useless games you don't play into a PS Vita half byte loader. And the only thing this Uno bubble is currently missing is the custom icon and the custom name. As you can see, VHBL can be started uh, by the Uno bubble. But it's not called VHBL and it doesn't have the VHBL icon like this bubble. So how to do it? It's actually pretty simple. Um, at first I'm going to start Filer to show you how to do this. Most of the part, most of the work will be done via a computer. So yeah. Oh, and it is required that you have a VHBL that can run the FTP application so you can re... well, so you can do this trick. If you successfully followed the previous tutorial, you will be able, you have been able to, well, create your own bubble that can launch the VHBL, and therefore you will be able to create or follow this tutorial as well. At first, um, important folders are these npeh20 folder, or whatever the ID of your game is. As you can see, this is the fake spoofed Uno, because it's very small. And the folder with the end is the important folder. This is a real game, Uno, and the trick is actually simple. As we know, an eboot.ppp can usually not be modified inside of the PSP emulator, except for a few tricks. A similar thing happens to the pboot.ppp file, which is, I think, for preferences boot.ppp, and we will use this preference boot.ppp file to change the icon and the name of the Uno bubble. The first thing we have to do is we start the FTP application, or actually at first we start Wi-Fi, and then we start the FTP application, and after we start the FTP application we go to the PC and connect via FTP, and then I will show you how to change the icon and the name via a computer and the FTP application. Be sure that you note the IP which the VHBL should show. And okay, there we can. There we go. We have an IP. Wi-Fi is running, and I have a new friend request. Okay, now I will continue on the computer. Okay, now on the PC we go back into the thread I showed you in the previous tutorial, into Crickrader thread, where is also the download for the VHBL bubble ISO file. If we scroll down a bit, um, we have a post by Newsec, which has. A download for a pboot.ppp file, which is hosted on mediafire.com. Download that file. I think I already downloaded it. I did. And after you downloaded the file, you need two more things. A hex editor. I recommend the DF hex editor, so just Google it and download it. Uh, I think version 1.1 1 .1 is the newest one. And we need the pbp unpacker. V version 0.94, the newest one, so just download it and install it. I already have all of these things, so yeah. Um, inside of the pbp, no, inside of the rar archive, we have an pboot.pbp file, and we just extract the file. If we check the file, we can check it with pbp unpicker, so just install it and it should op uh, automatically let you open pbp files with a double click, otherwise launch pbp unpacker, click extra and re register file associations. So pbp files should be double clickable to open inside of pbp unpacker. Okay, inside of pbp unpacker we can check like the file, the size, etc, the icon, but the important thing we want to check is the param SFO file. In there we have the pbu title, the actual title, and the game ID, everything else is unimportant. And what we have to change is the disk ID. It has to match the ID of our 
base game. For example, in my case, I'm using Uno, so it would have to be NPEH00020. If you have a different game, you can see the ID of the game in your game folder, and this ID has to match the ID of your game. But we will not use PvP Unpacker to change this, we will use the hex editor. I'm opening this hex editor and then I'm opening the pboot.pbp file inside of the hex editor. Um, at the right side we will have some, well a lot of dots, then we have over here the VHBL, this is the name of the bubble, and we have the game ID. Important is in the bottom left corner we have file size, or what it's currently in German it's Dateigröße. We can see it's 98,986 and before we close and save this file it has to be the very same. So if we edit this file it must not become bigger and it must not become smaller. It has to be the same size. Okay, at first this game ID is NPUG8038 but we have to change it. Our game ID we need is NPEH, or at least in my case it's NPEH 000 and 20 since the ID has to match my UNO game. Next we have VHBL which is four characters. We can change these four characters into anything you want but it has to be four characters. For example if I would want to call it uh, Vita half byte loader launcher bubble super awesome that would not work because that's too long. Currently we only have Four characters for this. If you want something longer, you have to use a different pboot file and edit it. As long as you change the game ID and the icon, you can basically use any pboot file. For our test, I will call it just ZHBL because I already have a VHBL bubble and having two would be a bit confusing. If you're happy with the file, check the file size. The number is the same as previously, as like before I edited the file and then I can save the file. Oh, and DF hex editor has a save mode, so you have to press F2 before you can actually edit the file. If you don't press F2, you can't edit the file. Okay, I'm satisfied. I will now save the file. As we can see, it created a backup file in case we messed up, but I think I didn't, so yeah. Then we have also the pboot file. Next, I will start FileZilla because we have to connect to our PS Vita via FTP. Be sure the Vita and the PC are on the same Wi-Fi network and then you can actually connect to your PS Vita. First rename PSP into PSP2 so we can access the game folder and change files inside of it otherwise it wouldn't protect it. Then access the PSP2 folder, access the game folder and then access the folder which has the end icon. So the folder which has the actual proper game. In this case it's UNO, so yeah. If you just drag and drop the pboot file, at first it looks like it transferred, but if you refresh you see it will vanish. This has something to, to do with the protection, eboot.pbp and pboot.pbp files are protected, so we have to use, at first we have to rename the file and then we have to use the trick. At first I will call it pboot2 and drop it inside of this folder. I'll refresh to verify that the file is inside of the folder, and yes it is. Next we use the very same trick to get it, well, so the, p the file is called pboot instead of whatever else is not protected. <coughs> First you rename it to pboot.pbp.dot and press enter. Then you rename it to pboot.pbp and one dot, so pboot.pbp.dot and press enter. Then you simply refresh. The PS Vita will automatically change pboot.pbp dot into pboot.pbp. Now the file is called pboot.pbp and it's successfully on the PS Vita. Refresh to verify. If you're satisfied with the work, go back to the main folder to the root of the memory stick and be very sure to rename PSP2 back into PSP, otherwise we will have a problem and you might have to format your memory card. Refresh to verify the folders renamed and if you did this um, I think that's everything we need to do on the PC. Close FileZilla and heat back to the PS Vita.
Okay, if we're done with the computer, we can just press square to exit the FTP application. Then we... Well, we can actually use Filer to verify that our pboot.ppp file is in the right folder and it's successfully transferred. PSP, game, the end icon. And then we have the pboot.ppp and the eboot.ppp. If we check the pboot.ppp, it still has, there we can see, ZHBL, the Daedalus N64 emulator, that's unimportant, and the correct game ID and PH20. Okay, everything's verified, everything seems to be good. I disable Wi-Fi. And now I will close the UNO bubble. As you can see, it's still UNO, but after we're done, it will change to VHBO. Now we shut down or power off the PC now <clears throat> and have to boot it into the safe mode. We press power, then PlayStation, then R, and it should boot into the safe mode. If it does not boot into safe mode, try to press this button combination a bit quicker, but the power button has to be first as far as I know. Rebuild database and wait. After the database um, rebuilding is finished, the bubble icon and the bubble name should change. The reason it does this is pretty much on the PSP, if you have an update for a game, for example My Little Big Planet, um, Sony has the possibility to ship it with the param.pvp or pboot.pvp file and if those alter the name, icon or whatever, it will reflect on the bubble icon and it will reflect on the XMB on the actual PSP. So we pretty much abuse a way to legally change the icon and the name so we can have the icon and the name we actually want. If we now check our bubbles, Filer was already on there, VHBL was already on there, and now we have our that HBL. If you click on the bubble, it should have the same icon, and it should have the same size as Una, since this is technically Una. You can see now the name is that HBL, and the icon is now the icon of VHBL. If I now start it, it sh as you can see, same health warning as the UNO game, so it is UNO. If I now start it, VHB will restart, and it will have the desired icon and the desired name, which is the VHBL icon and the VHBL name, or ZHBL in our case, since I wanted to show you that this is a new bubble and not a second VHBL bubble. Whatever. If we now keep the PlayStation button pressed, we can see the icon of the name we changed is still there, and if we now use filer to check it, you will see the icon and the name are from the pboot, while the <clears throat> game ID is from the actual game, and the launch content is actually our spoofed file. So the trick is pretty nice, you rename the folder, create another folder, put there the eboot.pp eboot.pvp you want to launch and if you want to change the icon of the name you put a pboot.pvp next to the real game so into the end folder this is the whole trick um, i hope you were able to recreate this at your own it's not very it's not hard to do you just have to have a vhbl if you're on 335 or if you're on a previous firmware for example 318 or 301 you can also use tnv or arc for this i hope you had success and see you soon.